In a recent video, Atheists Must Prove God Does Not Exist, I argue the point that since atheists are challenging the status quo, the burden of proof is upon the atheist. In their ignorance, they will claim that the burden of proof is on the person arguing for the positive. That makes no sense at all. It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative. What matters is that the minority view must prove themselves to the majority view. So if a person believes that aliens exist, they have to prove that if they want to be taken seriously. If a person believes the earth is hollow and that there are realms inside filled with native girls who all look like Terry Hatcher, the argument is on them. The burden is on them to prove their findings, what they think they've found, because they have challenged the status quo. So the atheist, who in his stupid ignorance wants to ignore evidence and argues away any evidence for God, then the burden of proof is upon the atheist because the status quo believes in some form of a God. But atheists don't get this, as they don't really get, you know, anything. And they contact me constantly about this. Here's, apparently, I don't know if this is an atheist or not, but Ravella4333 responds to that video about my arguing that the burden of proof is upon the atheist. <clears throat> Ravella responds, No, the burden of proof is on the person making the claim. Theists claim a god exists. It is their obligation to prove it. If they can't prove it, it doesn't then become my obligation to prove your God doesn't exist. I wrote back, pretending to be like an atheist. Elvis never existed. I see no proof. All songs and videos were made by fanatics who believed in him but never actually saw him. The burden of proof is on you to prove his existence, since you make the positive claim he existed. Ravella4333 responds, There is more proof that Elvis lived than there is for any of the biblical characters, such as Jesus, Noah, and Moses. There are people still alive who met Elvis. And we do have footage available of Elvis on stage and off stage, which is more than can be said about Jesus. I responded, Typical Elvis believer. You believe everyone who says they had an Elvis experience. Ooh. If there was an Elvis Presley, she was a black woman. I know. I saw it on Netflix. Only fundamental Elvisists still claim it was a white man. Any claims of multiple people seeing Elvis is actually mere mass hallucination. Oh yes, there are claims all across the flat earth of Elvis sightings or concerts or such, but this is obviously backwater nomadic myth invented around the campfires. Ravella responds, I wouldn't call you stupid. But if you were put on trial for being intelligent, the case would be dismissed for lack of evidence. I responded, I note you did not argue against my point. You instead used insults where argument was lacking. Funny, I impersonate an atheist and you find that unintelligent. I love you. Hello. If you're watching this video, it could be that you found it on your own, or it could be that someone sent to you because they care enough that they want you to hear about the gospel. The gospel is pretty simple. Some verses that can be used for the gospel are like Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you can think, well, you know, most of the religions teach that if you're good enough, you'll go to heaven. It's not what the Bible teaches. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for instance, says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 3, 19 to 20 goes on to say, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of, of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So, what's the answer? Christ. John 3.16, you've probably heard it. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 9-10 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's a pretty simple way of explaining the gospel. So, if you want, you can pray, and, you know, if God's leading you to pray and repent and accept Christ as the Savior, then you can be saved.